Ladies and gentlemen, it's been three weeks not tracking a single food and I may have got a little tubby. So we're locking in for 30 days, the strictest diet I've ever done. You can call it a mini cut, you can call it a jump start, but we got 30 days to get as shredded as possible. And I'm taking you all along with me, vlogging the whole process. Menno Henselman, who's a scientist and makes content on, on YouTube and Instagram, kind of came up with a protocol. That's kind of what I've been following to keep you an idea. So it's about 0.8 grams per pound of total body weight, right? So when I started this, it was about 216. You multiply that by 0.8, and that's kind of where you're sitting. All calories are uh, 8.3 times that protein intake. And that'll give you your total calories. An example is 100 grams of protein a day. You're gonna multiply that by 8.3 and that's 830 calories. That's the protocol we, we slammed in for a little bit over 30 days. Now for the part I've been dreading. Um, if anyone's followed me for the last, since 2012, 14, 12 years, 13 years on the internet. You know, I uh, don't love taking my shirt off and kind of doing the typical fitness content the half naked half chub morning wood get ready with me um but i want to make this video as honest as possible so we're going to go way in i'm going to take some measurements and then we'll do just a quick progress video kind of unflexed shirtless a little bit of quad flex but you guys know where i am lighting's whatever i just got one back window behind me so Pretty plain lighting. Keep myself pretty honest. Not my best, not my worst. Definitely a little bloated. Over the weekend we had a donut or two. Had Chipotle a couple times um, for the last kind of cheat day. So we're definitely on the bloated side, holding some water. So I expect probably next update next week to be pretty drastic. Morning, y'all. Um, back in Vegas. So those that don't know who haven't followed the Instagram or podcast or whatever, uh, moved to Vegas. So I split time. I got my business house in SAC and I got a house, family, Bart, everything I love here in Vegas. So we're week two, day two of the cut and uh, body weight was down about three pounds. Um, I don't have a scale here, but I weighed myself yesterday in SAC or the day before, before I flew out. And I was about 212. 211 and when we started we we're about 215 216 um so we're making progress there's a couple reasons i'm doing this one because i hate how filtered instagram is um and how everyone's just lying to you it's either photoshop or it's perfect lighting and perfect cameras um and i absolutely hate that maybe i need to shave for y'all is that what people do but down about three pounds again feeling pretty strong nothing crazy unflexed shit lighting there's one window open over there um, but just to give you guys an idea of where we're kind of at, I don't even know how to post, but, um, yeah, one to keep me locked in two to have a goal three. I hate the internet and how they lie to you about transformations. Dude, we got that emo hair going. So being as transparent as I can, hopefully we'll take some sexy pics at the end. Uh, but for now, you get that pay a lot. Why did he say Beginning of week three, let's try again. I'm in Vegas still, um, and I'll proudly report that I am locked in. I don't know if I've truly locked in my nutrition for over two weeks ever. There's one day I didn't track, but because uh, I had homemade popcorn, um, with like olive oil, I didn't measure it, but I know it was below calories still because the rest of the day I barely ate. Um, ate out a little bit. We had Korean barbecue, just tracked it in my brain and made sure we're well below. You overestimate what you eat. Um, that's it. So I'm gonna give you guys a little sneak peek of the physique. Don't love the idea that, and I know people are results driven. I'm slightly more process driven, although trust me, I like money and shit, but when you're more results driven, your only get off is showing your physique. That's not my only get off, and I hate it. And I don't think the industry should be based on that. But here we are. A little hairy. 
Barry will fix it. Shadows ain't good. That's it. I don't know how to flex. I don't care. We're just showing progress week to week. Still the morning for me. I still gotta shower. It's straight coffee work when I wake up. You know the grind, my friends. I hope everyone's good. Thirty day vlogs. Probably our first time we've ever done like a thirty day vlog like that too. To be honest. Um, and I've been on I've been on track. So at least a week check in and a mental check in when I have something to say. Back in California, flew in today. We actually have the rebrand of the company coming. So rebrand a good company. A bunch of new drops and cool things on the way. You'll see them soon. And hopefully I get to share with y'all what we've been cooking. The diet's still locked in, 15, 1600 calories. We got one more week. Not only is it my birthday the week after that, um, but we'll do uh, the 30 day challenge and reveal what we're looking like. So I got updates to do this week still on the diet and then uh, we'll continue, man. 203, 204. And we're about 70, 80% done with the cut. So one more week, and it's my birthday cheat day, and we'll get back to the grind. 203 is not bad, um, but I'd like to lose another 10, and we might be able to do it after a little three day break. Take a three day diet break, get my mind right for my birthday. Look at that half bro, bro, we're going crazy. I just woke up. I'm gonna go grab some coffee. Back in sack for two days. And then Vegas for a week, and then I'll be back in sack again. The grind continues. The drop is coming, though, so stay tuned for that. If you're not with it, goodcompanyapparel.com. Some higher-end gym gear. Trying to make you feel good, look good. Has some durability, some real quality in what we make. Some pride in the details, some pride in the fabrics. Um, but 204 is that. 204 from, like, 216. Do the math, man. That's not bad. So if we do another... Maybe four or five weeks. Give me to below 193. As soon as I'm below 193, that'll be the lightest I've been since probably basketball when I was 21. 30 days, four weeks, fully locked in. And uh, today's my birthday. I'm going to go eat pizza. Um, I feel good, man. I feel good. Uh, we shaved up. I didn't tan. We'll give you guys a little bit of progress to see what happened. Um, it's sad and good that it wasn't that hard. It's just not that hard when you lock in, man, when you really have a goal and really laser focused. Um, the sad part is I don't know if I've gone 30 full days without, um, like an unplanned meal or a free meal or an untracked meal simply because I'm not a competitor. You know, and I don't think anything's wrong with that. I've always been at healthiest body weight, despite maybe one or two times over the, my adulthood. Uh, maybe not the weight that I aesthetically like or that I feel best at, but I've been healthy. You know, I move my body, I lift, I eat protein, I eat my veggies, I just get a little bit overboard. Honestly, it's just not that hard. And I'm eating extremely low calories. The cut was very aggressive. You know, 1550, 1600 calories, plus half an hour of cardio, plus lifting. Plus, like, I don't want to say the most stressful month of work I've ever had, but um, one of the most layered months of work I've had. A lot's going on on the real estate front. Um, the full rebrand takes more energy than a normal launch because we're kind of redoing processes. Obviously, we're redoing the look and quality of the clothing. We're doing a lot of other stuff with it, so that's a little bit more intensive. Um, yeah, the gym has some stuff happening on the back end. I can't quite talk about yet, um, but a lot of different phone calls and meetings for that. But uh, plus started a new class online. Thought shout out to Thatch. Final check in, and I'm gonna go eat some pizza. We'll do. Um, hopefully, I have a little bit more training and shit in this this footage from Sub Boss for you guys. More detailed questions, and maybe we'll do a follow up video. We're answering all of your nutritional questions. If you want to ask them below, any nutrition, cutting, bulking um, questions, we'll go over that. If I had to guess, I'm probably about 202, maybe 201. I'm going to start about 216.
starting weight was around 215 to 217 and the lowest weigh in through this journey was 203. So 12, a little bit over 12 pounds, 14 pounds in roughly four weeks. Nutrient dense as I can, as filling as I can, and as convenient as I can because I'm traveling back and forth. And to be honest, I just don't want to cook that much like protein. So um, sometimes a, a real lean ground beef, you can find like a 97. Uh, kimchi was often in the rotation. Microwave uh, spinach and broccoli, or frozen uh, microwave uh, broccoli and spinach. Um, white rice or a var variance of rices to mix into that. Greek yogurt, oikos in particular. Um, I think it's, you know, 15 protein, eight carb, zero fat. So you're gonna eat a bunch of those, get some protein in, fill you up, slightly sweet versus eating all this other stuff. Um, and then some kind of like shredded or pre-made uh, chicken breast. I really didn't vary much. And that's kind of like the beauty in it, right? Like I feel like once you draw really strict lines in life, then you don't have to like, be creative or think about everything, right? If you're already like thinking about like relationships, business, you're thinking about whatever it is, there's all these options and things you have to like, decision fatigue, you have to make decisions. If I just eat broccoli, chicken and rice, although I love food, that just is one less decision or thing I have to think about to prep for. Cause I'm ordering the same thing every four days from the grocery store. You know, I'm eating the same thing for breakfast, lunch, dinner, every single day. And then I can focus my energy uh, on elsewhere. If you have no plans and, and, and although it's minuscule and it seems like nothing, it's coming from the same like energy tank. So yeah, basic man, basic. Yeah, I mean, check-ins definitely helped. Knowing this is going on YouTube helped. Um, and that's why like having a coach helps, right? If you have to email them check-ins or Zoom them once a week or a month, it's probably gonna hold you more accountable. Same reason we built a gym like this. Like if you know a homie and you train at 10 a.m. every day and you don't show up, there's a little bit of guilt involved because you know your homie was there working, spotting, loading, and it's just always easier and better and more fun together. Um, that's what makes nutrition hard, right? It's like literally just you versus plate and what you're gonna put in your fat mouth. Um, I don't really know what made it like easier or not. I think just like routine is always, definitely the YouTube in the back of my head, but I, I don't have any doubts. I've never had doubts that I could do it either. You know, like I, I do struggle with food. Like I've binged in the past and like I love eating copious amounts of food. It's my favorite hobby, just a snack and like watch a movie alone. Um, so like that's still not like the most healthy relationship in my head, but I've never also just from so many years of sports, I know I can lock in if I need to. Do you hear a lot of bodybuilders talk about the mental task and the stress of getting so lean and the grind of like a real prep. So I would never want to compare what I'm doing versus that. Although the nutritional factor is similar. Um, the rigidness of my training wasn't the rigidness of my cardio wasn't. And also I'm just not as lean or pumped as PEDs as many of them. Uh, but honestly, I felt pretty good. I was in pretty good mood. Um, I was pretty productive in terms of work. There's a lot of things going on behind the scenes that I can't quite announce yet. Um, obviously the rebrand was crunch time during that whole month. And I think it was probably our best launch yet. Um, just in terms of efficiency, storytelling and what the team put together. Um, so I think like productivity was just as high, mood was pretty good, sleep was probably the only one. And so like ripple effect from that's really bad for me. And I think it is for most people, but they just don't work on like a, a they, don't, they don't know like the standard of feeling good. I've, I've thought about this many times. Like people like get hammered drunk Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then like that's fucking up your next five days. And so they're in this constant rotation of like get fucked up, body recover, get fucked up. So they don't know what like, feeling good is. Um, I've used this reference uh, on how I turn into a baby when I'm sick because I work so hard to feel good every single day that when I do get sick, it's such a drastic change where if people are like always like feeling like shit, like even like little things like heartburn or sleep apnea or stress or bad, working on bad sleep and like forcing this stuff, they're, they're like 
baseline is already low, so when they get sick, it's just like a small deviation. But I try to keep my baseline fucking rocking and rolling. Long story short, when you just eat less calories, energy's expending, uh, sleep gets a little weird. So I got, I, I just didn't feel as rested as I normally did. And that's one of the biggest factors that keeps me sane. Um, like keeps my mental health in check, my anxiety, my depression stuff, just stuff I've dealt with my entire life. I didn't realize it till like high school, but sleep is like literally number one most important thing in my life. Um, so it affected that a little bit, but for every like two bad nights sleep, I get one good one. So it kind of slowly even out. And if that's like the worst case of this whole thing, like again, energy's good, uh, positivity's good, productivity's good. I can't really say um, it affected it that bad. Only real thing I'd change to like document this better is be around Sebas more. Cause obviously he makes it a lot easier to like form my words cause he helps me with research on questions. And then obviously the video work itself is much easier when you have someone else rather than like when I'm training in a commercial gym or even here sometimes like Sebas and the team see it like I gotta get it done and I just like leave cause I got shit to do or, or I just need to get out. So um, having someone follow me with a camera would obviously get you a little bit more looks into how I eat and how I actually move, which is harder to do when I'm on my own cause I just have multiple things I'm thinking about. Um, so I guess doing it in sack the whole time would be like probably optimal. But then even then like Sebas is busy too. You know, he, he helps me run the gym and, and all the apparel marketing and shit. So um, it's not like we just have all the hours just to be a YouTuber anymore. Uh, and I guess this is part of growing up. So I guess to do the challenge when I was like 23 would be the easiest. Cause then I could just film and not give a shit and base my whole schedule around filming, which is what I did for eight years, but it doesn't pay the bills. So you got to focus on other shit. Um, but otherwise I think pretty good to be honest. Definitely do it in the summer when it's hot. I don't want to be doing all that cardio and shit. I hate leaving the gym sweaty when it's cold outside. Um, I was in Vegas most of the time, but even here is nice and warm now. Yeah, I think that's it, man. Yeah, I can't complain. Can't complain. So another two, three weeks here, then another free meal, then we'll, we'll hopefully get down to 190 if you follow me on Instagram. Maybe you'll see some updates. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that was it, man. The 30-day aggressive cut video. Solid Mike, Third Street Barbell, Sacramento, California, 3SB.co, Peril Needs. Hopefully that teaches, motivates, entertains something. If you like the video, man, like the video. Subscribe, new videos every week. Appreciate you guys. Solid Mike, we're out.